It's one of the most drastic and deadly life changes a person can make to renounce your Islamic religion in favor of Christianity. But that's exactly what Zach Gariba did, and he's here to tell us why. Zach? Welcome to Full Circle. Thank you, thank you very much. It's good to have you. Now, okay, let's start at the beginning because you were raised from childhood to become a Muslim Imam. In fact, your parents put you on that path. Let's talk about your childhood. Well, um, I was raised as a Muslim. I was trained as a Muslim. My parents picked me somehow. I'm not sure why my parents picked me to be the Imam of the family, so I grew up as an imam, I grew up as a Muslim guy, and I've been to the Arabic school, I learned how to read and write the Arabic language. And that's how my journey started. Now you're, you're one of six boys yes. in your family. Yes, and I'm the second born. You normally, they want to use the first born, but somehow, I'm not sure why, they picked me up to become the imam of the family. So I went to school, I went wow. to Arabic school. Actually, when I grew up, uh, I was the oldest in my class because I studied English later on, but I studied the Arabic language and the, and the culture and the, well, to become a mom at the early age. And you came from a family of imams, right? Was yes. your father and your grandfather an imam? No, my grandfather was one, but my dad wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but I came from that line of, uh, of Muslim mm -hmm. religion. So anyway, I became a Muslim, I, I trained to become a Muslim imam and I was growing up and then, um, it's Zach, sorry, give us context. What is an imam? Like, what would you be doing as an imam, as a leader? An imam is somebody who is, uh, has his own mosque, has a follower, just like a pastor, has his own follower. It's just like a, it's just like a, a church, but we call it a mosque. Mm -hmm. And we have their own followers. And that's what an imam does. Imam does almost, almost the same thing like pastors do. Uh, mm -hmm. But since I was trained to become a mom, I went to a place called Nigeria. So I went to Nigeria and, and I became an imam of this particular mosque. And I loved what I was doing. I was enjoying what I was doing. I met this Christian friends. I have no idea who these Christian guys were, but I met these Christian friends. And we started talking. They, they brought their, uh, their Bible. I, I brought my Quran and I started debating with them. I started arguing with them. I started to tell them that, you know what, the, the Bible is, uh, the Quran is much stronger than the Bible. But unfortunately, it, it, we, we went back and forth and well, I kept beating them up. And then they come and they bring the Bible and I, we, I argue with them and I beat them up. But to cut more to When you say beat them up, you mean you out-argued them? You out-argued them? Yeah, I out I, 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 would, <laughs> you actually, yeah, you didn't actually beat them, beat them up. I physically beat them up. I physically beat them up. Like oh, you yeah. would yeah. yeah. punch them? Yeah, because I was oh, so bad. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Well, well it's good to make that up. difference. And, but anyway, so, but what happened was that I started, we started arguing back and forth they, I wanted to get rid of them because they, they are so quiet and I wanted to get rid of them. So the only way I could get rid of them to find ways to get rid of them. So they asked me if I could go and drop them at the place wherever they have this Christian meeting. And just go and drop them and say, well, if that's what you want me to do, oh, I'll do that. So <laughs> yeah. in Africa, we don't have phones. Okay. So we planned the six months in advance. So I went to this beautiful, um, I went to, I took them to, uh, um, to this place. But meanwhile, this, my landlady has a little girl who is 12 years old, who is paralyzed from her waist to her foot. So on that day, since I have no choice, I carried her with me. To the what? To the so stadium. So you're babysitting this little yes, girl, and, and you forgot yeah. you were supposed yeah. to drive them. So That's you had right. to take her with I had you to, take them to drive with me. them to so the stadium. You got your Christian quiet friends yes. and a little 12 year old girl yeah. who's paralyzed. Who's paralyzed from her waist to her foot. In your car. Yeah. Going to a. To a, a big stadium where <laughs> somebody was speaking at this place just to go and drop them. So I got to this stadium and. Uh, I park at the back of the stadium, but meanwhile, in the back of the stadium, there's a speaker facing me. And this guy and the speaker was saying, Jesus, Jesus. I didn't know, I didn't know what it was all about. I knew that I was going to speak about Christians, and they were, they were, they were speaking about Christian meeting. But as I parked at the back of the stadium, something did happen. The girl wanted to come out of the, uh, out of the car. Now, you was, were stuck there. You yeah, wanted to stuck. just leave. That's right. But you were surrounded by cars, so Yeah, you because I parked the car, and I wanted to find somebody who could give me the direction. But people thought I parked the car, so people park around me and they block me in the back of the stadium. Yeah. So now, you can't now go anywhere. I can't go anywhere. I'm just You're trapped. And, and more of us. That's the key of what to do. Pack yeah. everybody in, uh -huh. them in and trap them in. I think the problem was because I'm the imam in that neighborhood, everybody knew me. So I'm nervous now. I didn't want them to know that I'm in oh, this Christian meeting. So I've been yeah. trying to hide my face. But the problem is this girl was it was so hot, but this girl wanted to walk 
walk on the stage, walk, uh, walk to this bench. So I was taking her to this bench. As I was taking her to this bench and... So you uh, carried her because yeah, she was carried paralyzed in her from arms. waist down. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Carried her, I carried her in my arms. But yeah. as I was walking to the stage and something happened, and, and this guy started speaking, uh, speaking on the speaker. And, this, and he started to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But I would try to close my ears. It's not working. But as I was walking faster, this girl's leg moved. And I'm saying, oh, wait a minute. Her this legs is, moved. Yeah. And I said, well, wait a minute. This is voodoo. This is witchcraft. Yeah. And, but what happened was that then suddenly the more this guy said Jesus, the less his tangling. Wow. wow. And then I got nervous and she said to me, I want to walk. I said, no, you can't. You are in my arms. Anyway, to cut butter short, she bit me. Because she, she wanted you. to get down. Yeah. You were not me. putting I, her down. I, I, have, you. I have the scar here. <laughs> she bit me and I slammed her to the floor. But right in my, the naked of my eyes, I saw this girl walking. Uh, and I'm was, saying, she, was she paralyzed from birth? Yes. And wow. I'm saying, how could somebody mention Jesus' name and a girl will completely be healed? So that was my, wow. then I started looking for what, what is this? There's something has to be with this. Somebody mentioned Jesus' name, name alone. So anyway, I went home on that day, met her parents, and went to the mosque on that day, as I was at the mosque. I was at the mosque. Somehow, I'm not sure what happened. I was leading my Margaret, I was leading the prayer, and then suddenly, my, um, uh, I, this words came out of my mouth. I don't know where it came from. Instead of me to say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I said Jesus Christ of Nazareth, <gasps> right in the middle of the mosque. And how many <gasps> men are around you? There lots of people. So what happened? Was it just like a? <gasps> I mean, I, and you know, they speak, the speakers are behind the stadium. <gasps> And behind the behind <laughs> so the mosque, the whole, so the whole place could hear it. Oh, wow. And I got nervous, and they kicked me out. They like wanted they to kill me. They just walked right up to they you and just to said, kill me. "You're out." Yeah. They wanted they to kill to me. Kill yes, yeah. and that is the beginning of my problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can so my my older brother helped me to come to Canada. So as a student, so I came to Canada, and I completely, you know, I wanted to become a pagan. I wanted to become, um, no, I don't have nothing to do with Christian. I have nothing to do with but, but Muslim. But did you question, like, when you said Jesus Christ of Nazareth, didn't you start to say, who is that? What, I know, what because, do I do? Because my friends have been talking to me about this. So I was wondering, hmm, wow, how can these words come out of my mouth? Even I didn't plan it, I never knew it was going to come out of my mind. It's, I was going to say something else, but something else came out of my mind. But on, I remember on January 3rd, 1997, that is so pivotal for me. I was in, the, I was in my room, and I planned on that day to, to kill myself. Mm. I was really going to end my life because my parents deserted me. They have nothing to do with me. They made a funeral for me. Everything was just crashing yeah. down. So on January 3rd, I planned to kill myself. And as I was planning to kill myself, I said 3 o'clock in the morning, I had the pills and everything ready. 3 o'clock in the morning, and I had a door knock at my door. And I was so angry. I went to the door, there was nobody there. I said, that is strange. In Canada, people have phones, they call you ahead of time. <laughs> anyway, I had a second knock. And I went there, and the third then, and I said, you know what, maybe the person is going to knock the third and So I started thumping my foot so that the person would think I'm walking back to the bed. But yeah. I stood there and I heard this knock, bang, bang, bang. And I opened the door and I heard this voice that I've never heard in my life. It says, your mother and father forsake you, I'll be there for you. <laughs> and I look around and I say, oh, now I'm hearing voices. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this guy? He said, I am Jesus. Mm. Now I'm calling you to do something else. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mentioned Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the mosque. I got myself into trouble. I don't want to have anything to do with you. He said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am ready to help you. And that was the beginning of my life. Wow. <laughs> That's this incredible. Amazing. Okay. Now we're going to take a, a quick break, and when we come back, Zach will tell us what life is like now and why he says he is ruined for the ordinary. Stay with us.